this might have been a mistake. I, uh, I... Hey guys, so I wanted to give you a little update on this powering forward trip that I've been on. They hired an outside production company to make this uh, make this video. What I've been working on this week is has been focused on new business models for GE Power, and they're gonna take what they've shot this week and make an external and internal video from this this production company. Awesome guys I was working with. I met a lot of really nice people. You know, it was like full blown production cameras and. Sorry, I'm out of breath. Uh, we we finished shooting last night. I'm out here in Seattle, and uh, I have a red eye this evening to get back home to Greenville. I woke up at 5 a.m. and drove to Mount Rainier. And so I'm gonna do a little quick hike this morning, drive back to Seattle, and then, then fly home. So yeah, obviously, out of shape. Skateboarding was not allowed here, so I'm having to walk. <laughs> here for a sec so I just realized I didn't even explain what a microgrid is basically it's the ability to have your own generating capacity on site and to be able to disconnect from the main grid when you want to um, so an example of that would be maybe a hospital might be favorable because think about if you have a natural disaster you want to make sure that your hospital still is making power uh, a Navy base it might be important to have backup energy on the base that you aren't relying on the main grid in times of crisis or things like that so that's a couple of examples of why uh, you might want a microgrid other reasons might be something where you want to have more renewable generation than your existing grid can provide just because you're trying to be you know more environmental more environmentally friendly um, so anyway so let's uh, get back to uh, to Washington here <laughs> while I'm getting pelted by <laughs> wind and rain <laughs> It's kind of like if you could think of a kind of a proving ground for us to try to you know, understand how solar, distributed energy, small gas units, electric vehicles, small businesses, the Navy, all this stuff can kind of work together. So in conjunction with the full size, the normal grid, to you know to give the customer there the most reliable solution that they're looking for, and the most efficient, and the most economically friendly. What are you guys doing here today? <laughs> so we're hiking up to the uh, Muir Snowfield on Mount Rainier to then uh, do some backcountry skiing, put the skins on our skis and slide uphill. So cool. For as far as we can and then I ski had back skis. down. God, I can go up there with you guys. That's so cool. Yeah, well, good yeah. luck, guys. I mean, Thank you. Have fun. Thanks. Yeah, bye -bye. <laughs> See ya. Oh, that's so cool. One thing that kind of stood out to me is there's a, there's a really big growth opportunity. I'm maybe hitting these, these stats wrong. 
but I, I think it was something like like 20 percent of like Australia's future energy is expected to be in distributed power. The Navy Yard up here, up there in Philly, really gave us a, a proving ground and just kind of play and learn before we go and attack those things. So, really wish I had my sound guy right now. <laughs> the sound guys are great. I'm sure you can't hear anything I'm saying, but uh, maybe I'll have to redo this. But yeah, if nothing else, it's getting my thoughts out while it's fresh in my mind. So. And it's really nice being out here in danger. You know, the more that we can do to protect this stuff in the future, I think it's for sure a worthy cause. Certainly some customers, like the, the guys up at Philly Navy Yard, were really making a big push to be as renewable as they could and as, uh, as good for the environment. With their microgrid, they're, they're adding batteries there, solar, and it may not always be the cheapest solution right now, but it's certainly getting more that way. One thing they were kind of driving home to us was the importance of all of our different energy generating assets because you never know when you're gonna have Clyde Hayes, you could have, you know, I'm over here in Mount Rainier, they could have a volcano erupt that could black out the skies for weeks or months. And then what are you gonna do? So all those things are certainly important to keep and there's gonna be a place for all of them to work together. It's just a matter of finding the right mix and that's kind of the, the journey that we're, we're all on right now. So yeah, on my way back down, it is uh, finally broke through the rain and the nastiness and it's much nicer than up on the top was. Do you mind telling us what's going on out here? Yeah, so <laughs> we're sampling cones this, from these subalpine fir trees. Yeah. And uh, we're taking the seeds out of them back in the lab. Okay. And then we're gonna grow them in different soil types. Super so we cool. think that as the climate gets warmer, there's gonna be more of these trees growing in the meadows. Okay. So they might not have the fungi that they need on their roots. Oh, all right. So I'm growing seeds in soil I've taken from the meadows, yeah. soil I've taken from the forest. And just see how they how they do, huh? Cool yeah. man. Well, appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> it's all right. So I just realized that I didn't give any uh, any real specifics about what to do out in Redmond. So I figured I can try to do that right now. Um, you know, just landed, got the red eye flight here. I'm in Detroit. So next leg is gonna be to Greenville. Psychedelic crap all around me. Uh, about to have a seizure, so super excited. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, getting a little more specifics with Redmond. I think it was kind of you know broken into two areas for what they were doing up there. You know, it's more. <laughs> Jesus. So one, I have a really hard time concentrating if this is going on now. Um, one area is like big macro level optimization of the grid. You have like super sunny day in one area, a lot of solar, so let's, let's pipe that energy over to an area where you may not have as much of that renewable capacity or you may not have to turn on your gas turbines that day. Or the other thing is like edge computing at like a micro level. So you're looking at your gas turbine, you have computers on site at that for that asset, re-optimize the gas turbine specifically that day. With the future, it's gonna be really kind of integrating all those things together off on the edge, system level optimization to give us the most resilient, reliable, cheapest, efficient grid that we can. So another thing was blockchain. And I'm like, what, how the hell does blockchain have anything to do with any of this stuff? Imagine yourself as having solar panels on the roof, batteries, and you wanna sell that back to the grid they can leverage blockchain to help with that transaction and help to get all these people on the edge. <laughs> this is my exit. But anyway, help to you know, make that happen. So when I got here to Redmond, they did a really good job of impressing on me how much the energy system here is changing. It's that we're getting a lot more data, we're getting energy from multiple directions, right? It used to only go one way from a main power source, now it's going from solar up to the grid, up to the main distribution area, so they're having to monitor all this data. And what was really impressive to me was the 
the opportunity that we have here with all this because it's changing so fast. We have expertise in this energy business that spanned a long time. Our grid business with the software, the edge computing, the gas turbine stuff that, you know, that I work on that I'm familiar with, all those things ultimately can add up to a solution eventually when we piece them all together that's gonna be something that's probably pretty powerful for helping to solve this energy you know, problem and make the, the most resilient, most reliable, most efficient energy system that we can. And so I think that we're all super lucky to be a part of this. It's, it's definitely hard right now. We're going through this big transition and that's never easy, but the fact that we're in it, I, I think is still something to be excited about. So I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, kind of what comes next from it.